Hello, hello, and welcome to odds on uh, Champions League round of 16, second legs at play. Four matches to look uh, forward, and two of the best uh, tipsers to analyze and guide you through all the action. Alvaro Romeo and Daniele Fisichela. How are you guys? All good, thank you. Very well, thank ciao, you. Ciao, ciao. Daniele, let's let's repeat let's repeat the ACAS of uh, a couple of weeks <laughs> yes, ago. Yes, uh, yes, we are doing really well in Europe this time. So let's say, let's okay. let's hope let's hope so. Yeah. Yeah, let's back hope back for back the same then. Yes. Yes. And actually, guys, before we dive into all uh, uh, all of the four games this week, is any of them that you cannot uh, wait to to watch? Perhaps buy and PSG, but or oh, that will be the, the easy option. No, that's my option. It's the easy option, but it is the <laughs> option. Well, obviously, I'll be watching more Tottenham Spurs on the same night. I mean, sorry, not Tottenham Spurs, Milan on the same night. I think uh, you know. Chelsea Dortmund, really interesting. I think yeah. uh, we can see a surprise there, probably. We will see. But before we get started, guys, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell. Now, let's go. All right. The first uh, second leg to analyze that we have is Benfica in Lisbon against uh, Club Rouge. Nothing looks good at the moment for the Belgium side. Not only they have lost 2-0 the, the first leg at home, but their manager, the English uh, Scott Parker, after Friday's 3-0 defeat against the relegation contender Ostender, recognized that he doesn't even know whether if he will be sacked or not, if he doesn't get the positive uh, result in, in Portugal. Since he took over the club, his side won just two games out of 11. They are still fourth in the league, although 20 points behind uh, Genk and the top, Benfica, is the other side of the of the coin, arriving with a comfortable advantage at home, top of the Primeira Liga. Only one defeat in 30 matches this season between Primeira Liga and the Champions League. Danny, we can dig deep here, but I don't know if we are going to find a miracle in the making here. What's your thought? No, we're not going to find a miracle in the making. We're going to see a Portuguese side qualifying for the quarterfinals of the Champions League once again. And it's something we are used to see. And, you know, credit to Benfica, credit to Portugal. They always produce talents. They seem to get mm. earlier than anybody else to get the talent or the the, the players. They're going to become talent. And you go loads in this Benfica side. Only lost one game this season. They won nine of the last 11. They are plus eight on Porto. Things look good. And I think Porto had not been bad at home, but Benfica have been excellent. And they're going to win probably their 38 domestic title. Great work from Roger Schmidt, first year in charge. Took a side. The last year finished second and obviously improved them a lot. Benfica are a scoring side. They can be patient. Against Bruges, they had the chances late. They knew the chances were coming. They always scored at home in the Champions League. Uh, they scored 14 in five games in the Champions League in the group stages. And, you know, as I said, it's a patient and clinical side. Uh, fifth top scorer um, in, 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 in the Champions League with 18 goals scored overall. Seventh for shots in Benfica. Bruges are the opposite, 27 for shots in the in the, in the Champions League. And Mignolet, alongside Onana, is the keeper who has made the most save, 33. And uh, although Vlacho Dimos, the player, the keeper of Benfica, has done pretty much half of them, 16. So that tells you a lot. You know, Bruges have done the work very early. They've been really good in the group stages at the beginning. Probably yeah. teams didn't know much about them. But as soon as they found them out, all the, the lacks of the technical problems, also the, the the, the concentration, the experience problems, they emerged. They haven't scored in the last four Champions League games, Bruges. And I'm think, I don't think they're going to go here and score. They only kept two clean sheets in the last 13, by the way, the Belgian side. Okay, Parker needs time. He's probably coaching a side that is not his. But, you know, how much time is going to be given? We don't know. Yes. They are fourth in the, in the, in the Belgian league. They're going to go to the playoff. But it's very difficult for them to redeem the title. Uh, I think what Benfica is going to do is going to try to finish the job early put the game to bed and prepare for the next games in the in the Primera Liga. The value here could be Benfica to win early, so to win the first half, which pays 2 or 5, but no doubt about Benfica going to be in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Abro, uh, are you on the same side than Danny here? Yes, uh, I am. I am. I think Benfica winning at 30 minutes goes over too as well, and it's a very good one, but, uh, you know, this is pretty much decided. I mean, Surprises happen in football, but Benfica to qualify uh, pays one 
point oh and oh one. So that tells you, you know, how favorite the book is considered Benfica. Who are doing a very good season. The truth is that um, this season, despite Darwin leaving and despite Enzo Fernandez leaving in January, they are still phenomenal and they've got 62 points out of 69. Um, only one side in Europe has a different, uh, no, sorry, a similar, similar um, ratio of points, which is Napoli in Italy. And this Benfica is uh, really nice to watch because they've got a player like Gonzalo Ramos, who has scored um, not only a hat trick in the World Cup, but uh, 21 club goals this season. Mm, then Joe Mario, a player who didn't succeed in England. Uh, he's scoring goals, he's taking the penalties. Uh, he scored one in Bruges, in fact. Uh, and I think that Joe Mario taking penalties is something that you shouldn't overlook if you want to go to the individual market. Uh, in the same way that Gonzalo Ramos to score, for example, pays two. And he's scoring many decisions, he scored the brace in the weekend. So why not to think that Gonzalo Ramos can keep his good form? Um, I think that Benfica is the favorite for this game. Benfica to win and over 2.5 goals in that game is uh, my favorite one here, apart from the individual market. Uh, Benfica to win and over 2.5 goals. That doubles up your bet, pays two. But I'm going to keep for Mayaka something slightly more conservative, which is Benfica to win and over 1.5 goals. And when it comes to Bruce, I mean, they started the Champions League fantastically with three straight wins, but now they are inconsistent and there are no patterns either because, uh, for example, this weekend they lost uh, to Ostend, uh, 3-0, a club in relegation. Um, Jude Glav, for example, who looked like their best scorer, he hasn't scored in 2023. And uh, since the World Cup, they have conceded at least a goal in 10 of the 12 games they have played. So, yeah, Benfica is a clear favorite here. And those uh, of you guys maybe looking for an Asian handicap uh, market, Asian handicap minus one for Benfica is on the range of 1.82. Uh, but I guess pretty much for everyone uh, decided this uh, this time, Danny, yes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely decided. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Benfica did, did, did the job early. I mean, I mean, they won the group against PSG and Juventus. So, you know, yeah. it, it is a side that is uh, that has, to be, has to be considered. And, and they, they've got a few things, Leo. Uh, to yeah. start with, the counter-attack of Benfica is one of the best in Europe. Uh, Gonzalo Ramos is a player who offers a similar, a different thing to Darwin Núñez in the sense that, sense that maybe he's not as fast, but he's very clinical and... Uh, he scores many goals, poacher goals. I mean, he goes to the six-yard box and he's scoring from there. Rafa Silva is one of the best players in the world for counter-attacking. And then in defense, uh, Otamendi is working very well uh, down there in defense. Uh, and Verissimo, a player who was capped for Brazil two years ago, he's back from an injury. He's not starting yet, but uh, I can only expect him improving. So yeah, it's a good, very good moment for Benfica. And Neres as well is such a powerful knife to have in the wings. Really good season for them, as I said. Absolutely. A great, a great team to watch. Uh, Benfica always uh, losing players, but still getting into the into the rhythm of the Primera Liga, or in this case, in, in Champions League. The next one we have, we leave Benfica and uh, Club Brach behind. The next one is super interesting. Chelsea in Stamford Bridge against Borussia Dortmund. First leg, 1-0 for Dortmund, although Chelsea, remember, had their chances to score even on the last minute of the match. I remember a long effort from Enzo Fernandez. Alvaro, uh, but I see a big problem here. Chelsea needs goals to go through, and they have scored only two in the last seven in all competitions. One of them on Saturday to win uh, their first Premier League match in the last uh, six fixtures. There are actually 91 clubs in England, top four divisions, that have scored more than Chelsea in 2023. The goal on Saturday came thanks to a defender, Wesley Fofana. There is also an extra problem in this tie for Chelsea. They may wake up and start scoring, but at the same time, it's difficult not to see Dortmund scoring too here in, uh, in Stamford Bridge. The last time they haven't scored, Dortmund, that was back in November before the World Cup in a game which, which they lost 2-0 against uh, Wolford. So they are now top of the Bundesliga, just beaten Leipzig on, on Friday. Uh, how, how do you see this one unfolding? Is both teams to score a kind of like safe bet, if you want, for this tie? I think so. I think so. But uh, Chelsea doesn't score many. That's the thing. The last time a, a striker won a game for Chelsea, the last time, was against Crystal Palace uh, on the 15th of January. Kai Havertz scoring the only one. But ever since then... Mm, 
they had only one more win, and it was last weekend, and it was Fofana who scored the goal. In between, Chelsea was winless in six games. The other day, for example, Kai Havertz had a one-on-one -on -one, yeah. uh, with uh, Messier, the goalkeeper from Leeds United, and uh, he just chipped the ball, but very poorly over the goalkeeper, and you know he missed another one-on-one. -on -one, and uh, you know, I think that the best scorer they've got in the squad, strange as it sounds, is uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, who doesn't play and who is not registered in the Champions League. I don't like Chelsea at all. I really don't like Chelsea this season. And, um, you know, I think that the win against Leeds is going to give Graham Potter some breathing breathing space and breathing time. Um, I think that Joao Felix is the best individual talent they've got right now. Uh, we know that Joao Felix doesn't play well every game, but he's been doing very well in the Premier League, in my opinion. Um, he's the right individual, definitely, to yell the midfield and the attack and the best possible player to play the ball forward between the lines. But I don't, I don't think that Chelsea has uh, uh, proven uh, to be reliable this season. It's true that in Dortmund, in my opinion, they deserve better, and in some other games uh, in the last couple of months. But at the same time, they deserve better, but they don't get better. Uh, whereas, for example, I think that Borussia Dortmund is in a very good state right now, with a certain belief that I didn't see in the past when they were in the title race as well. This time they believe uh, they are a very good side in transitions, as we saw with Adeyemi. Um, they got eight straight wins in the Bundesliga. And then a number of players who are actually very competitive right now, and they are not that young anymore or that inexperienced. For example, Youth, youth Bellingham. I mean, he has played already three or four, uh, three football seasons at the, at the highest level. Adeyemi is a fantastic fantastic. Uh, forward to, to go up front. Then the top scorer, Julian Brandt, is going through a very strong creative period. And um, he's the best player in Dortmund to keep the ball under pressure, to keep it until the last, until the last second and give the right pass. And then the defenders, Sule and uh, Schotterberg, I mean, they are working very well together. I mean, I think that Sule's signing last summer was fantastic, the player coming from Bayern. And Emre Chan, is helping as a third defender when needed, when uh, Dortmund loses possession. So I think it's a good moment for them, and I'm going to back them. I'm going to back Dortmund. This is the news for me. Uh, I think that an Asian handicap plus 0 0.25 for Dortmund in the first half, 181, is a very good uh, price, because I think that this game will unroll slowly, because Chelsea doesn't have the firepower to go at you from the very first minute. They don't know how to unchain the storm. Or a double chance for Dortmund. What do you say about that? 195. But the biggest value, and I'm not going for this one, but I want to let you know, Dortmund to score two goals or more, that pays three. But anyway, I think the double chance for Dortmund, 195. Or the Asian handicap, plus 0 0.25 for Dortmund in the first half, 181, are my favorite bets. Danny, the both team to score does not uh, does not appeal to you, or, or do you think something like that could happen in Stamford Bridge? It does appeal to me. 183. And that's what I'm going to go for, both teams to score. It is true that Chelsea's numbers are poor, mm -hmm. as you explained very well, Leo. They have not scored in 10 of the last 16 games. They only scored seven times. Against Leeds, they did some good stuff. I think after the first 30 minutes, they could have been 3-0 up. They've not been very clinical. And of course, the goal, the goal came uh, from a corner. Now, it's about converting the chances into goals. You know, a lot of the games that they drew, if they had, the chances into the back of the net. Probably we talk about a different story. But, you know, it is true that he's a team that is in transition. They brought eight new players in January. The same Graham Potter said that he has got troubles training because there are far too many players. You know, even the riches have got these problems. Poor, poor <laughs> you know? uh, even the riches cry sometimes. They only won two of the last 12. That's true. They only two wins in the last 17 Premier League games. But... How far are they from clicking and getting into shape? Now, if things don't go their way straight away, the crowd can be really, really frustrated with them. But that could be the opportunity to put things right. And I think the game at Dortmund, they didn't deserve to, to lose. Yeah. However, at the back, they are vulnerable against Leeds. Things could have swung the other way very, very quickly. And for this one, they're without Thiago Silva, who is out six weeks. The doubt whether Kovacic is going to play. Kante might play a few minutes. So again, there are a lot of changes that Potter can make. You know, this is the kind of side that you never know who's going to start. And obviously, that's a downsize. But as for Borussia Dortmund, you know exactly who's going to start and who's going to play, as Alvaro explained it really well. 
Borussia Dortmund have done the job in the summer with the signings really, really good. You know, let's not forget that they signed two, uh, two uh, the, the, the fullbacks, you know, Ryson, Wolf, uh, obviously Haller up front. So they have, they have added quality, they have added depth to their team. It is a side that has won 10 consecutive games, Borussia Dortmund, not always cleanly. I mean, the win against Leipzig is good, 2-1, but in the end, Leipzig had a lot of chances. Offenheim, they beat 1-0 two weeks ago. Offenheim had a lot of chances. Uh, so they, do, they do concede, but I think Dortmund decided they found the right balance between youth and experience. So it is a definitely important side to uh, watch. I mean, this could go all the way. If it's a Chelsea win, it's going to be a small win, so it's probably going to be to extra time. But the both to score market is what appeals me a lot. 183. I don't see Chelsea backline as solid as under Thomas Tuchel. And I think Dortmund, you know, if you look outside the expected goals and the figures, I think they're going to concede here. Both to score, 183. And those thinking as well, Borussia Dortmund to, to qualify is 1.73. Dortmund to go through to the quarterfinals of this Champions League is 240. The odds on uh, Chelsea to go through a difficult uh, one definitely here for, for Potter, whose future might be decided in Sanford Bridge against uh, Borussia Dortmund. From there, we're going to have to move to Paris, and I believe we may have arrived for, to the place where everyone is, is waiting. You spoke, Galvar, at the beginning that, that this is the match you're really looking forward to, to watch. I mean, Allianz Arena in Munich, uh, the biggest tie of, of this week, Bayern Munich against... Uh, PSG, we know 1-0 for Jules Nagelsmann uh, team in, in Paris. The night when uh, Mbappé only played a handful of minutes, but was enough to see that he can handle them almost on, on his own. It seems that without Neymar, the team is functioning better and the connection between uh, Messi and Mbappé is flourishing more than, than ever. Uh, both teams are, are top of their leagues, of course. Both won on the weekend. PSG knows how to win away in the Allianz uh, Arena. Everyone will remember the 3-2 in 2021 where Mauricio Pochettino was the manager. Alvaro, is reasonable that goals over 2.5 market is at the low, 1.51 last time I checked. But the PSG win uh, with odds of 4.15 must be attractive for many, I believe, in here. It must be, but uh, it's not for me. No, 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 I'm telling, I'm telling <laughs> you the truth. Of course, of course, it is attractive because this is one of yeah. the richest sites in the world and the, the two main stars of the World Cup are featuring for them, Messi and Kylian Mbappé. But, you know, no, 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 it's that market is not for me. I just believe that there are better markets than PSG winning, really, at least uh, to my taste. Uh, I think that Mbappé to score, especially now that Pavard doesn't play. It's a very interesting one because uh, he came 20 minutes against uh, Bayern two, three weeks ago and he uh, caused havoc uh, in Bayern's defense. And uh, I think that uh, Stanisic could be the one marking him. And I don't think that Stanisic, who seems to be a good defender, but is that proven just to, to play against the, the, a player of the quality of Mbappé, especially because Mbappé, as you said, has found a very good partnership with Lionel Messi. I mean, last season we saw glimpses of that, but this season we are seeing it week in, week, in, week out. I mean, Messi and Mbappé, they are combining excellently. So Mbappé to score 238 is fantastic. It's fantastic. Or even Messi to score, even though I find it more unlikely, of course, 288 uh, is very good too. But uh, Messi against sides of the physicality of Bayern and especially starting his runs from midfield may struggle to get into scoring positions. I think that uh, he may not find it as easy as PSG found it, for example, in the weekend against Nantes. Um, let's see with uh, Bayern, because they top the Bundesliga, thanks to the, the goal difference, by the way, but they are not the scoring machine they were last season. Of course, uh, having Chupo Moting, who has extended his contract until 2024 instead of Lewandowski, doesn't help, even though Chupo Moting is doing a good season. And uh, let's see if Sadio Mane will be playing a little bit. He came out from the bench in the last game of uh, Bayern in the league. And, uh, you know, I anticipate a very nice battle between, Mb between Mbappé and the defense. I anticipate that. I think that Bayern will have the ball. I believe that PSG will, st will struggle to keep it uh, because they don't have the technical ability that Bayern has. But still, in the counter-attack, things may happen. So my bets are the following. Mbappé to score, 238. And the second half to have more goals than the first half. 
because I think that this game will open up in the second half. Uh, that doubles up your bet. Actually, uh, I agree with that one uh, on the on the second half, of course, a game which could open up there. Both teams to score in that second half is at 2.68 at the moment. Danny, your thoughts on this uh, Bayern PSG? For me, it's a goal game. It's a, go it's a game with more than 2.5 goals. And it's a game for the reasons that Alvaro outlined where both teams are going to score. So my, my, my pick is both to score and over 2.5 goals. is a mini hack. He pays 2.32. We saw how Mbappé changed the game as soon as he came on at the yeah. Parc de France. They had chances. Bayern were the better team overall. Yes, they score through a mistake from Donnarumma. But Donnarumma made three big saves. And Bayern looked much more threatening. Look, the stats of Bayern in terms of attacking, they are very similar to last year, apart from finishing off. So they often put a few crosses into the box. Uh, they load the areas, but they don't have the finisher. They don't have the poacher that Lewandowski is. Now, of course, Mane has been injured, but he's not quite the same player. Let's see if he starts this one. Look, for PSG, as much as uh, uh, people who like, uh, you know, to play with three up front and everything, they dislike what I was going to say. But I think for PSG, the best tactical opportunity is to play with the wing backs is to play with a 352 and have Wakimi on the right hand side they are set up to play with three defenders with Marquinhos Ramos and another central defender and the two wing backs and the fact that Neymar is out is a great opportunity for Galtier to stick yep. to the 352 which he knows very well that's what he was playing a little that's what he was playing a Saint Etienne and I know it might not be everyone's cup of tea because, you know, often the 3-5-2 becomes a 5-3-2 a five, a five, not in possession. But it gives this PSG side the opportunity to make the most of the players. And, you know, with a player in midfield like Berratti that is back in form, is very good at break up the play and keep possession. I think they're going to have chances. If they play on the counter-attack, they're going to have more chances to win this game than if they go for it and they go gang hold. Recently, they beat Marcel away comfortably, playing with the wing backs. And they are not in great form. They only won eight of 12 Ligue 1 matches. So that's not great for them, for their standards. They've been knocked out by Marcel in the cup. They only kept one clean sheet in nine PSG. So I think they are susceptible to you know, to concede, although, although of course, the, the strength in defense. No clean sheet in the Champions League for PSG either this season. And Bayern... I think this is the kind of moment of Bayern. When they're angry, they get better. You know, when you provoke them, when in the Bundesliga they suffer a few setbacks, like losing to Borussia Mönchengladbach Redley, then they come up firing. They destroyed Union Berlin 3-0 two weeks ago. They were far more superior. Won a Stuttgart uh, convincingly. Coman has been in very good form. And I think, you know, when he's... A lot is demanded for them. We saw time in, uh, week in and week out. They are able to do it. And I think from now on in the Bundesliga, they might go and win five or six consecutive games. And that could be enough to edge Borussia Dortmund. For this one, it could be tight. And I, I, I'm, I'm not saying PSG have got zero chances of qualifying, but they have to play smart and play on the counter. Both to score over 2.5 goals, 233 for me. And Leo, very quickly, both teams to score. Makes sense, uh, even though it's not my choice, but makes sense. Also because Donnarumma is not uh, enjoying a great time. He's not going through a great period right now at PSG. He's not no. having the time of his life. <laughs> he's, not what he's, he's not having what the seasons no. that he expected to have. No. Last season was difficult because always been in contention with Keylor Navas. Mm -hmm. And he made, well, his mistake against Real Madrid cost them after all. Sometimes you do forget that he also makes a lot of saves. Yeah, yeah I think the pressure... Uh, Going from Milan to PSG, going to a team where you're expected to win every single game and you're expected to win the Champions League, it could have it could have compromised him a little bit, of course. Alvaro, just to build a little bit of what Danny said before about uh, describing uh, Bayern Munich, uh, I had the feeling that when we see that you have in front PSG and Mbappé mostly, who are so good at running at the counter attack, running behind your your lines. And when the scoreline is still on your favor because Bayern Munich is winning 1-0 at the moment, at the same time, you might be thinking, okay, maybe it's going to suit you a little bit more to be maybe a little bit more conservative. But I had the feeling that Bayern doesn't know how to be a conservative no. team. So cannot this also play into the hands of PSG? 
Definitely, because I think that uh, Bayern relies a lot on the high defensive line and on the speed and the athletic athleticism of some of their defenders. Matis Matis De Ligt being probably the biggest uh, exponent and uh, you know example of that. But on the other hand, they don't have the reversibility to switch um, styles and suddenly start defending deep. Uh, they will never do it, especially under Julian Snagelman. That would be betraying his own principles. So that, I agree with you, Leo, that will play in favor of PSG. And that's why I am pointing at the second half as the decisive period of the game. I'm sure that in the first half will, things will happen. But in the second half, either because PSG scores or because PSG has to win, uh, there will be there will be plenty of action. So that's why I'm going for the second half to have more goals than the first half. But absolutely a great tie to second leg to watch in the Allianz Arena. Bayern Munich to qualify, odds 1.27. PSG to qualify, odds of 5.70 at the moment. The last guys uh, of the return legs of this week is the one with the more parity and maybe the harder one to to call i will i will listen to what you have to say tottenham in north london uh, with milan both teams have been very similar trajectories uh, this season spurs are fourth in the premier league milan fifth in the serie a they both lost in the weekend and most importantly the tie is absolutely alive with the 1-0 in 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 san zero danny i can't see it right now uh, or i can't see it that straight as for the book is that tottenham is such a favorite here 2.04 for a win, and Milan doubled those odds to 4.15. Although when you will look uh, to the qualified market, then the favoritism is with Milan, odds yes. of 1.59 to go through. Danny, there are doubts or Milan is confident of making a statement in, in North London? They're not confident after uh, losing badly to Fiorentina the weekend, but certainly they go there with more confidence than when they went to the first leg because they were coming on the back of very bad uh, run of results. Now, Milan have won four games to nil, including the one nil to Tottenham, and lost badly to Fiorentina when they were outpaced, outridden, outmuscled, really. It was a poor performance from uh, Milan. Now, Milan has to be praised because they quickly changed their tactics. They switched to a back three. Uh, Pioli introduced Malik Chao, who's been a really good performer so far. Young defender, very quick, pacey, uh, strong. And, you know, seems that Kalulu and Tomori alongside him have also benefited from that. So, obviously, Milan have been able to switch to a back three, uh, playing Teo Hernandez as a wing back. He likes to come on the pitch as well, so helps the midfield as well. And, you know, the introduction of Messias as a right wing back has made them a little bit more attacking. And this has happened very, very quickly. However, I don't think we need to be... Uh, the numbers don't have to confuse us. Okay, Milan have kept four consecutive clean sheets and we thought, okay, wow, that Milan is super solid. They're not quite. And I think the way they defend without and with the ball has not been quite the same as last season. In January, overall, Milan have become very slow when they had the ball. They pressed less high. Less high. They become more reactive, defended a little bit deeper. And it was also a chance, I know, a chance of oppositions do not take in the chances. As soon as they met Fiorentina, who are in a good spell and actually can take the chances and can attack, it was very interesting what Fiorentina did. They went 3v3 with the pressing. So the three attackers of Fiorentina pressed the three defenders of Milan. Milan had a lot of problems coming out with the ball in a clean way. Milan had issues, really. So let's see what happens here and what kind of formation Pioli goes for it. Because, for example... If he chooses Messias as a right wing back, he's a very attacking proposition, but he's going to be facing the likes of Perisic and Son on that left-hand side for Spurs. Whereas if he goes for Calabria, he's basically switching to almost to a back four, but then Milan risk to be really, really reactive. Look, they need to be better than in Florence, okay? In Firenze, there was no Leao, kept on the bench, no Brian Diaz, slightly injured, so it's going to change. Of course, De Cateler was the the least worst of everyone, really, but they didn't create much. And there is a stat that is really telling about how poor Milan were in Firenze. Magnan touched the ball 61 times. The four forwards of Milan, Giroud, Origi, uh, Rebic, and Ibra, touched the ball 70 times altogether. So, you know, it's not been really good. Yes, Ibra was back, but, you know, I mean, let's let, let's leave. He's 41 years old. Um, 
I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's very difficult. I think Milan could take Spurs all the way up to extra time. Yeah, it, it, they might not be trashed. I don't see Spurs at home in a European night suffocating you. I don't see the environment being as hot and as decisive as Old Trafford, as Anfield, as Stamford Bridge to a certain to a certain stage. But they they cannot play worse than what they did at San Siro. Okay, normally they tend to get the job done in those kind of games. Look at the win they get against Chelsea. Spurs ugly, but they got the job done. And I said, as I said, I don't think they're going to play worse than what they did at San Siro. Conte will return in the bench. And I think this psychologically could be really important for them. Let's see what kind of... I'm really interested to see what kind of game Milan does. They cannot just wait. And maybe those chances they wasted at the end in the first leg, they might rue them, really. And, you know, they had a chance to make 2 nil with the Catalera and with Tiao. Tottenham win here. I'm going to go for a Tottenham win. Pace 2-0-1. The odds are very good. I'm not saying Tottenham are going to qualify, but I think Tottenham are going to win this one. Hi, bro. Uh, Danny just uh, mentioned the, the game against Chelsea for, for Tottenham. Yes. In that match, uh, they done the job in the second half. Against West yes. Ham the previous week, they done the job in the second half. So they, they yes. usually, this, this uh, Tottenham team, they need to keep a clean sheet in the first half in order to do the job in the second half. In Milan, they went behind the first 10 minutes. They couldn't overcome it. In the Premier League, has been the case this season. Once the opposition scored in, uh, in North London, then they have problems to turn the, the tie around. So in this case, a first half draw, which pays or has odds of 2.25, seems to me something very important for Tottenham. Danny mentioned Perisic. I believe he's going to play Ben Davis. I don't see uh, Antonio Conte playing Perisic uh, on, uh, uh, on on Wednesday. Actually, Ben Davis, Emerson, they were on the bench against uh, Wolverhampton. I believe they're both going to play. They both play against uh, West Ham and against uh, Chelsea, and they managed to do the job. Do you think it's, it's a key for Tottenham to have a clean sheet at least in that first half? Well, uh, absolutely, yes. And... Uh... You know, expanding on that, I guess that Emerson Royal is going to play uh, as a right wing back. On the left, I'm not too sure, to be honest, Leo. I'm not too sure who is going to play on the left. But I think that on the right, Pedro Porro hit the crossbar the other day for yeah. Spurs. But I think that uh, Emerson Royal is a more reliable um, tool uh, in this case for Antonio Conte, who is back for the game, by the way, because uh, Stellini confirmed that. So good that Conte is back. Uh, Tottenham is going through a difficult period. Uh, right now, I think that Liverpool will have the upper hand in the race for the fourth spot in the Premier League. And, uh, you know, they are not getting the results. Uh, Stellini, after the game against Wolverhampton Wanderers, said that the issue that Spurs has has nothing to do with the formation or with the system or with the tactics. He said that the details are costing them. Well, uh, these are uh, these are the kind of games in which details are going to be important. So uh, Spurs will have to sharpen uh, ahead of this game. And um, you know, there are a few things that Spurs uh, are uh, are paying for. Number one, not having Hugo Jogi, the goalkeeper. I think yeah. Fraser Forster is nowhere near the quality of the Frenchman. And then uh, Harry Kane and Son, they don't have. They are not the partnership they were last season. But still, I believe that Tottenham is going to qualify. I could go for that one, 240. And I tell you why. Because not only because Milan is uh, having a difficult season, fifth in the Serie A, they lost to Fiorentina. Also because, for example, Rafael Leao, the only player who actually, in my opinion, has the quality to be potentially a player for, you know, one of the best sides in Europe. Um, I think that Rafael Leao is having a terrible season. And he hasn't scored since the 14th of January. And... Um, even when he plays at the Sanford Bridge, for example, back in October or in September, he was so ostracized on the left. I don't understand why they are using him like that. Not the position, but especially the orders he gets of not going to the middle and trying to do something different, you know. Um, I think that this game is going to be very devoid of creativity. No team has great matter in midfield. Maybe Milan with Ben Affair a little bit. I don't know. Maybe Spurs if uh, Harry Kane place as a number 10, but I believe that creativity will be absent in this game, but still, I think that Tottenham differently to what Daniele thinks, I think that Tottenham at home they can be also capable of creating a nice atmosphere uh, in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and I've seen them, for example, this season just uh, uh, 
resorting to heroics to win a few games, like for example against the Sporting Club Portugal in the Champions League at home. Was it the Sporting Club Portugal? I think so, yeah. Uh, in the last minute when uh, Richarlison scored that goal. So I'm going to go for Asian Handicap minus 0.25 for sports, um, meaning that if they win, you win, and if they draw, you only suffer half a lose. But I also like Tottenham to win the second half, and in fact, I'm going to go to that one as you pointed to Leo, I think that Tottenham to win the second half 230 is a very good one here because I can expect, um, you know, the likes of Harry Kane or Son, but especially Harry Kane, stepping up as the critical moments of the game come up. And guys, one thing in here because uh, we, when we spoke about Chelsea Dortmund, we can see that uh, Dortmund can absolutely go through in Sanford Bridge. In uh, Tottenham Milan, we have disparity of views. Danny Fink in Milan, uh, maybe can do the job. You are thinking of, of Tottenham. But if Dortmund goes through in Sanford Bridge, if Milan goes through in North London, Liverpool having to, to believe in miracles again to overcome a tie in the, in the Bernabeu, how is the narrative of the financial firepower of the Premier League, which is true, but not being able to show in on the pitch this season if this happens? A one-off, in my opinion. I think that okay. uh, the biggest strength of the Premier League, we saw it five years ago when they put five teams in the last 16 of the competition. And ever since then, English sides normally have qualified. Look at Spain, they qualified only, they managed to qualify. Mm, or Real Madrid is the only one who managed to qualify. Italian sides, Napoli is fantastic, but, uh, you know, it's difficult for them to put four teams in the last 16 round. Same thing applies to Germany. So I would say that, the, you know, Sometimes the draw is not helping you. Real Madrid, Liverpool is unlucky. Um, I would say that uh, Chelsea had a difficult draw, but I believe that uh, managing to put year in, year out, four teams in the last 16 round is something fantastic. And uh, the last all English final was in 2021 between City and Chelsea. I think that the power is there, and yeah, this could be a one-off only. Oh, I totally, I, I, I totally okay. agree. I mean, the, 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 first of all, yeah, as, as Alvaro said, the draw is unkind. Liverpool met Napoli in the group stage, which was a surprise. So they would have fought to finish top there. When it comes to Chelsea, a lot of changes, of course, changing the manager. And Tottenham never been a force in Europe. So, you know, after all, uh, I think the thing, things balance, balance themselves out. But I'm sure English side, at least one in the semifinals of the three competitions will have one. Guys, amazing insight. That's everything you need to know uh, for the first four second legs of the Champions League round of 16. But before we finish, I would like to listen to your best bets or safe bets. And also, of course, I would like to listen to your Akas Alvaro, starting with you. Safe bet, Benfica to win, 147. And Mayaka is Benfica to win, Tottenham to win, and Bayern versus PSG over 2.5 goals. Altogether, 441. 441 then Alvaro's Aka Dani all years to yours best bet PSG Bayern PSG over 2.5 goals which pays 151 the Aka for selection Benfica as an handicap minus one Chelsea Borussia over 1.5 goals Bayern PSG both team to score and Tottenham Milan under 3.5 goals all together 482 hopefully we're going to have the, the same with the ICAs that happened in the in the previous round. So fingers crossed for that one. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Ciao. Thank you. And before you guys leave, do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell. See you next time. Bye-bye.